Greetings comrades, today is a sad day for our country, sad day, the saddest of days. Our Tawarish, our friend, our agent Donald Trump is no longer a president of the United States. Brother Donald has lost the US elections. Obviously, this is basically a national day of mourning now. Let's see how Russian state media handles this. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. First, let's go back in time and see how Russian state TV channels covered preparations for the American elections. As you already know, any major event in America is the most important topic for the main channels of Russia. Wildfires in the US, protests in the US, scandals in the US, elections in the US, any of these topics, even not related to Russia, immediately becomes the main subject for our TV. Naturally, the upcoming elections were covered extensively long before the voting day. Let's recall how it all happened. Initially, Trump's presidency was perceived as something positive for Russia. Here's the video of Vladimir Zhirinovsky, the most eccentric politician of Russia and the leader of one of the parties in the state Duma. He raises a toast to Trump's victory in the elections. Поздравить всех наших граждан, которые тоже косвенно болели за победу Трампа. In 2016, Zhirinovsky was far from alone in cheering for Trump. Many in Russia viewed his candidacy as a real chance to improve fraught relations with the United States and scrap the Western sanctions. State media was more restrained in their assessments, but they did not hide the fact that Trump's presidency for Russia is a pleasant surprise, because it was well known how much Hillary hated Russia. Так вот, я считаю, что, конечно, если бы мы его получили Клинтон, то мы бы получили дополнительную головную боль и дополнительное усложнение целого ряда проблем. Сейчас есть шанс, что ряд вопросов будет решаться на более прагматичной основе. However, over the years of Trump's rule, it turned out that his victory was not actually a victory for Russia. Trump continued to impose tough sanctions against Russia, refusing to cooperate in most areas. Therefore, before the 2020 elections, Russian politicians and state media were no longer unambiguous. The same Zhirinovsky recently said that Trump's done nothing good for Russia. Нам было бы выгодно. Нам Дональд Трамп мешает тем, что вмешивается в поставки газа. Still, he noted that Trump will win on November the 3rd. In general, most Russians believed that this time the US presidential elections would not affect life in Russia in any way. According to polls conducted by the Levada Center, nearly two-thirds of respondents said it doesn't matter who will become a president of the US. Russian state TV channels had a similar position. Chief Russian TV propagandist Dmitry Kiselyov voiced it in his program on October the 1st. Пусть сами решают, а мы уж примем решение американского народа к сведению и будем работать. Other experts expressed fears that Biden's victory would lead to the consolidation of the West against Russia and some kind of resurrection of NATO. Знаете, то, что американцы на нас санкциями давят, это бог с ним. У нас 30 миллиардов, в конце концов, с ними товарооборот. А с Европейским Союзом 240. Если они построят европейцев вот в одну линию с этими санкциями, Байден, да, Трамп, я думаю, нет. Поэтому мне кажется, что Трамп для нас выгоднее. The host of the popular TV show 60 Minutes, Евгений Попов, worried out loud that the Biden presidency would mean the administration and the White House feel with Russophobes. Of course, Vladimir Putin himself spoke most clearly on this topic. In his recent interview, Putin offered some hints about whom he might like to see in the White House after November the 3rd. Говоря о предпочтениях, что можно сказать? Мы знаем, что действующий президент Трамп неоднократно высказывался в пользу развития российско-американских отношений. В полной мере, конечно, не реализованы те намерения, о которых президент Трамп говорил раньше. Но все-таки при президентстве Трампа больше всего было введено различного рода рестрикций и ограничений. 46 раз были приняты решения по новым санкциям, либо по расширению действующих. It's pretty obvious that the Kremlin was disappointed with Trump, so Biden's victory was not a disaster for them. Putin initially expressed his readiness to work with Biden, so in the first days after the elections, Russian TV channels did not make strong statements. 
Right after the voting day, Russian politicians were generally happy about how close the race turned out to be. For example, Gennady Zyuganov, Communist Party leader, thinks that US is more divided than ever. At the same time, Russian officials could not refrain from some teasing about the outdated election system. Russia's foreign ministry on Thursday said that outdated legislation and the lack of regulation had revealed flaws in the US electoral system. Отмечу, что в условиях примерного равенства соперников за президентский пост дают о себе знать очевидные недостатки американской электоральной системы, на которые неоднократно указывали и международные наблюдатели, включая Бдипчу БСЕ и признанные эксперты в этой сфере. Частично это объясняется архаичностью соответствующего законодательства и неурегулированностью в нем ряда принципиальных моментов, о чем мы говорили неоднократно. Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov also said that the election system significantly distorts the will of the population. У них избирательная система, наверное, самая архаичная из всех, которые существуют в маломальски значимых странах мира. И если американцы готовы жить с этой традицией, которая существенно искажает Russian TV presenters did not choose words carefully. They directly called what was happening in the United States carousel voting and falsifications. And a spectacle of collapsing superpower. Falsification carousel on the elections, which in vain see the Democrats. Trump called drunks and brought to the streets people, his supporters, with the demand of honest elections under the lozung я считаю, что сейчас Америка это действительно такая падающая сверхдержава, и для нее, учитывая внутренние настроения в США, комплексы американские, комплексы исключительности, комплексы царя горы, для них единственный путь возможен это путь конфронтации. Guests of the popular talk show 60 Minutes appeared to be scandalized as they talked about mail-in votes in tight races such as Georgia and Pennsylvania that were stolen from Donald Trump. На самом деле, действительно идет в США, по сути дела, государственный переворот, когда действующего президента совершенно нелегитимно, нагло, ну, по сути дела, лишают поста своего президентского. Guests on Channel One voiced similar concerns. They said that Donald Trump is being persecuted on the internet and his actions undermine democracy in the United States. They were also surprised that the incumbent president of the United States can be just disconnected on the live TV under the pretext that he is talking nonsense. Trump today is turning off the air, at least for the reason that he is feeling sick. He has been for five years or so sick, and no one is turning off. He is still the president. And the most important thing is that it just doesn't fit into the head. Look at what he is creating on Facebook. He blocked a group in support of Trump against the fraud of the election. There are 360 thousand. Твиттер, кстати, блокирует Трампа тоже, если вы зайдете на официальную страницу Трампа, это уже то же самое. Это значит, интернет включился, противоправную деятельность и подрывает непосредственно демократию в США. Once I can actually agree with them, some actions of US media were questionable. And I completely agree that our system is much more advanced, because we know the winner long before the voting day. Who needs the voting day anyway? We can spend this day in other ways that will be more useful for the country. For example, everyone can go and plant one tree rather than wasting paper on ballots. When Biden finally got his 270 votes, almost no one was interested. Moreover, the victory was not as obvious as all the analysts expected. Russia was not one of the first countries to congratulate Biden, even though Navalny actually did it, from Germany, where he is still recovering from a suspected poisoning. Putin was not so fast. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters during a phone briefing that we believe it's correct to wait for the official results of the elections to be announced. Let's wait.